In today's video, we are going to talk about 15 things you must do after installing Linux Mint 21. Myself, Muhammad Zubair, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. So without any further ado, let's get started. Well, whenever we install a new operating system, whether it's Linux, Windows or any other operating system, we should perform update first of all. So I'll do the same with my Linux Mint 21. First of all, I'll open my terminal. So press Ctrl Alt plus T or you can also click on this icon that is on the taskbar. After that, I'll just write here sudo apt space update and hit enter give it your password hit enter once again it will check if there is any update that needs to be installed so after we are done with this step we should perform upgrade as well so for that purpose i'll write here sudo apt upgrade what it will do it will upgrade all those packages that we have in our system at this moment hit enter it will take a little bit of time depending on the updates of packages available in your system. I have already done the update of my system. That is why there is no one. In your case, it will surely show you some of the updates and then it will update them. We are done with this one. Let's move ahead. Number two, install multimedia codecs. Well, multimedia codecs are essential for some audio video file formats and many other operations in our Linux distributions. Same goes for our Linux Mint. In Linux Mint, we get a lot of them as default, but some do not get shipped with Linux Mint and we need to install them manually. So to install your multimedia codec, we'll use some of the commands. Again, we'll use sudo because we need administrative privileges. So the command for that is sudo space apt space install space ubuntu hyphen restricted hyphen extras. Well, you might be wondering that as we are using Linux Mint, why we have written Ubuntu in here? Well, if you do not know, Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu. That is why all those things that you can perform in Ubuntu you can do in Linux Mint as well and as you can see we have apt package manager here that we use in Ubuntu as well. So just hit enter now and here it says after this operation 8879 KB of additional disk space will be used. So just press Y and hit enter. In case if you do not want to do this press N and hit enter and it will cancel the operation out. It will take a little bit of time so we'll wait for it. After the operation, your terminal will show you this window. Do not worry, just hit enter and you are good to go. Or you can click on this OK button. Number three, install Synaptic Manager. But before that, let me increase the size of my terminal. Well, with the help of apt command, as I have talked about earlier that apt is a package manager, we can install packages from the terminal. But on the other hand, we also have another package manager that is called as Synaptic Package Manager and it also has GUI interface. With the help of it, we can install up to 7000 packages in our Linux Mint. To install Synaptic Package Manager, we have to use one simple command as sudo space apt space install space hyphen y space synaptic hyphen y mean yes. It means if it ever asks you about something, it will take yes as an answer. Just hit enter, give it your password and you are good to go. And here it has started the process again. Do not worry, just hit enter and you are good to go. Scroll down and you will have all the information that this has to present to you. So do not worry and just hit enter and you are good to go. Number four, create backup. Well, backup is always one of the easiest and nicest thing that we should perform when we install our Linux distro. 
because there can be anything that can go wrong. So in that type of circumstances, we should have a backup of our operating system. And Linux come with a utility called as time shift. So I'll just press my super key, which is Windows key in Windows operating system, and then search for time shift. Here it is, just hit enter. Give it your password, hit enter once again, and it will open a utility like this in front of you. From here, we have snapshot type. Go with the first option and click on next. After that, it will ask you about the snapshot location where you want to create a backup of your system. So let it get complete. Here it is. From here, you can select the location. After that, click on next. And here, it is asking you that how many snapshots you want to have in your system you can have on monthly basis, weekly, daily, hourly, or even on your boot level. So select the one option appropriate to you and then just click on next. After that here, it is asking you about the home directories and it allows you to decide which folder time shift will back up. So you can include those folder or you can exclude them as well. After that, click on next. And here you just need to click finish and your process will be done. Number five. Configure Update Manager. Well, in case if you want to have faster update for your Linux Mint 21, there is a thing that you can perform. For that purpose, look for Update Manager in your system. I'll just write here Update Manager and hit enter. From here, here you can see we have an option that says edit. I'll just click on it. From here, go to your software sources. It will ask you about your password, hit enter, and then it will open a new window in front of you. After that, here we have mirrors. This is the main mirror and this is the base mirror. What you can do from here, you can select the mirror that is closest to your location. Just click on the first tab and it will open a small window with the list of mirror. From here, select the mirror as per your liking. After that, click on apply and you are good to go. Do the same for your base mirror. It will again open a list of mirrors that are available. After that, again, select the mirror, click on apply, and you are good to go. Now, to configure the system updates frequency, it means how quickly and on how frequent basis you want to have the updates. What you need to do, you need to click on edit and then click on preferences. And from here under the options tab, we have the frequency that we can change. For example, here it says refresh the list of updates automatically. You can select days or even you can go for hours and you can go for minutes as well. And then you are good to go. So this will make sure that you have the updates quickly for your Linux Mint 21. Number six, install hardware drivers. Well, it is always recommended to have those sets of drivers that are compatible with your hardware resources because in that case, your hardware will perform better. For that purpose, look for driver manager in your Linux Mint, here it is, and then we'll update our drivers. Here it is looking for hardware drivers, and it is looking if there are any that are needed to be installed. So let's wait for it, and then we'll move ahead. And here it says, your computer does not need any additional drivers. So in your case, it might show you some of the hardware drivers, and you can install them very easily. We are good to go with this one and let's move ahead. Number seven, decrease weapons value. Well, one of the ways that you can follow to boost the performance of your system is to decrease the swappiness value. This feature makes sure that your system uses the RAM instead of using the hard drive. So for that purpose, open your terminal and write the command as sudo space xed space slash etc slash sys ctl.conf this is a file that we are going to open after that hit enter give it your password hit enter once again it will open a file like this in front of you from here just scroll down to the bottom of your file and write a new line of code so i'll write here vm dot swappiness equals 10 and we are good to go and after that just press ctrl s and we are good to go and now your system will perform better. After you are done with this step, make sure to reboot your system so that the changes can take place permanently. Number eight, Xkill shortcut. 
while xkill is a Linux command that primarily gets used to force quit your unresponsive apps. And some distribution have a preset shortcut for xkill, but Linux Mint 21 does not have this. So for that purpose, open the system settings. I'll write here, settings, here it is. And from here, I'll look for my keyboard. I'll just search for it, here it is. Just click on it, go to your shortcuts and click on add custom shortcut. In the name, right here xkill and in terms of command, right here xkill as well. Click on add and here it says keyboard binding. We have three unassigned. Double click on any one of these and press control plus escape key. And after that, you are good to go. Now if I press control escape key, here you can see my cursors have been shifted into a cross sign. If I just click on any of these two application, it will kill them. Just like this, I will again press control plus escape key and again it has turned into a cross sign. It will kill my terminal as well. That is very supportive in terms of those applications that are unresponsive and you are not able to close them. Number 9. Activate or configure your firewall. While Linux distribution does not need any antivirus because they are pretty secure and they have pretty good firewall in them already. But by default, firewall doesn't come activated. For that purpose, we have to enable it on our own. So I'll just search for firewall and here it says firewall configuration. I'll just open this one, give it password, hit enter. And here we have our firewall. As you can see, the status is inactive at this moment. Just click on this and it will activate your firewall. Down here, we have incoming and outgoing. It means you can deny or allow the incoming traffic or you can also allow or deny the outgoing traffic from your system. Down here, we have some rules. Then we have reports, logs from our firewall and we have many other things. In case if you want to define your own rule, you can add it in here. You can customize it and you can edit its schedule as well. And this was all about it and now we are good to go. Number 10. Add or remove startup apps. Well, Linux Mint 21 also comes with some of the services and application that start running at the system startup. And there are many of them that we don't even need. If you remove those apps, it will surely increase the performance of your system. For that purpose, look for startup application. I'll write here start. And here it says startup application. Open this one and from here disable the services and those things that you do not want. I don't want my blue man applet. Then we have SSH key agent. Then we have update manager and we have many other things. So just remove those things that you do not want and you are good to go. Number 11. Install TLP. Well, we know that Linux distributions consume a little bit of more power when we use them onto your laptop machine. To make sure that your system uses the optimal resources and you have long battery time, we should install one simple utility and that is TLP. For that purpose, I'll use a command and the command is sudo space apt space install space TLP space TLP dash RDW. Hit enter. Here it is. As you can see, it is downloading and installing our TLP. So after we are done with the installation of our TLP, now we need to enable it. And the command for that is sudo space systemctl space enable space TLP and hit enter. And here it has started the process and it will enable our TLP. And now we are good to go. Number 12, remove apart. Well, many of you might have seen or might have noticed that some rectangular pop-up windows shows up onto your screen every now and then and telling you that there is a crash report and ask you to send the report. Well, if I talk about myself, I find this very annoying as this shows up even when there is no crash. To get rid of this, we just need to run one simple command in our terminal and the command is, let me clear my terminal first, sudo space apt space remove space app port hyphen gtk and hit enter. Number 13, system cleanup. Well, for the smooth functioning of our system, 
and keeping it clean from the junk files and unwanted cache is very necessary. We can do that with the help of some simple commands. To clean your partial packages, what I'll do here, I'll write sudo space apt hyphen get space auto clean. After that, hit enter. It will remove the partial packages from your system. And now to remove unused dependencies, I'll use the same command, but instead of auto clean, I'll write here auto remove and hit enter again. After we are done with this one, I'll show you that how you can clean up your apt cache. So for that, I'll write here sudo apt hyphen get space clean and hit enter. And now we are good to go with this one as well. Let me clear my terminal. Number 14, install Flatpak. Well, Flatpak is a software utility that comes from Fedora and that lets you to get access to more application and software packages in your Linux operating system. And you can do that in various distributions of Linux as well. Many applications that you find might not be there in the software center, but with the help of your Flatpak, you can bypass this. For that purpose, first of all, we will install the Flatpak using the following command. And the command is sudo space apt hyphen get space install space Flatpak. After that, hit enter and we are good to go here. Number 15, decrease the boot time. Well, you might have noticed that your system takes five to 10 seconds to boot up. Well, we can reduce that value. For that purpose, we have to use one simple command or basically we have to edit a one simple file. And the command for that is sudo space vim. Vim is an editor basically, space slash etc slash default slash grub after that hit enter it will open a file in front of you like this now we are not into editing mode press i and after that here if you see here we have grub default as 10 remove this value and write here zero in order to get out of this and save the changes press escape key colon wq exclamation mark and hit enter and we are good to go we are done with the 15 things at the end i'll tell you about one bonus thing and that is installing htop well top is a command line utility that tells you about the system resources information here if you see we have system processes user of those processes and then the number of resources that are being used by each process at the top we have memory value swappiness information and some other information as well well, how cool it would be that if we could get all this information in more sophisticated way. For that purpose, I'll install a utility in here and that is called as htop sudo apt space install space htop and hit enter. This utility will also give you the same information just like top. So if I write here htop, the only difference here is now we have the information in more sophisticated way and as you can see, we have colored that are giving us the information. Here we have memory value, swappiness value, and same processes, users, percentage of resources that are being used. And that brings me to the end of this video. I hope now that you must have liked watching this one. And if you have anything to ask, please leave a comment below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Till the next video, take care.